diaphragmatic hernia is a condition that affects about one in every 2,000 babies. The diaphragm is a muscle that separates the chest from the abdomen and it's the major muscle for breathing. In a very few babies, this muscle has a hole in it called a hernia. For those babies, some of their intestines end up up in their chest and that causes compression of the lung and that results in a number of other problems that babies need help with when they're first born. This condition needs surgery and within about the first week of life they have an operation so that the hole in this muscle, the diaphragm, can be stitched back together or a patch can be put into the muscle and the abdominal contents can be pulled down into the abdomen and separated from the chest and the lung. Babies with CDH are particularly difficult to treat usually because of the fact that they need both very intensive surgical management and very intensive medical management. So the operation for these babies often takes two or three hours and then it can be at least two or three weeks while we get them stable enough to come off the ventilator and breathe on their own. And the main reason for that is the fact that the blood pressure in their lungs is often much too high, which means that the heart has trouble pumping blood through the lungs, which means they have trouble picking up enough oxygen. So they need the help of the ventilator and lots of medication that we give them so that they can get enough oxygen in their system to survive. And over the first few weeks of life after they've had this surgery, they often develop and mature enough to be able to breathe on their own. Well, some of these babies still have high blood pressure in their lungs for many weeks to months after they've had their initial surgery and so often they need medication after they've gone home to help control the blood pressure in their um, lungs. These babies often have trouble feeding so they have some nutritional issues which need to be addressed for many weeks to months after their surgery. Some of them need to be fed with a tube that goes through their mouth and into their stomach. Most of them learn to suck on their own but that often takes much longer for them to learn than it would for a baby without CDH. So in the short term maintaining their nutrition is a very important goal. Some of them have problems getting enough oxygen even when they're off the mechanical ventilator. So many of them go home with a nasal prong oxygen system so that they can have oxygen put into their system from a gas cylinder or from an oxygen concentrator that they have at home. In the longer term, some of these babies have problems with their development because they've been very sick and sometimes the lack of oxygen and the amount of intensive care that they've needed can have a bad impact on the way the brain develops. So some of them have developmental challenges that we have to help them address as they get older. They might be a little bit slower to walk and a little bit slower to talk. So we get the physiotherapists and the speech therapists and the occupational therapists to keep a very close eye on the way they develop so that we can give them the help they need to achieve those developmental milestones. Babies who've had this type of condition who have very significant impairment of their lung function are much more vulnerable to ordinary coughs and colds and viruses that would give you or I just a normal cold can be life-threatening in these little babies. So we have to be very careful about the way we immunise these babies and we give them extra immunisations to protect them against viruses like RSV or respiratory syncytial virus which is a virus that causes a disease called bronchiolitis and that can be a very nasty disease in young infants who've had any sort of condition that impairs the function of their lungs. It's also really important that families don't expose these little babies to coughs and colds so we often advise their parents to deliberately keep them away from situations if they if they know they're going to be exposed to a cough or a cold. If relatives come to visit and they've got a nasty flu, then we would encourage parents to tell them that they need to come back when they're better. We're very fortunate in Australia, I think, that we have centres where 
the survival from this condition is as high as it is anywhere else in the world and it's incredibly rewarding to see these families come back for appointments with their babies and see how well their babies are doing and it's always fantastically uh, rewarding to see these children developing normally and going to school and see their parents happy particularly when their parents have had such an emotional journey going through the newborn intensive care unit when they come back six months later and 12 months later and they're happy and things are going well that's very rewarding and it, it, it reminds us that what we're doing is uh, is a good thing for these families and that everyone on the team who's caring for these babies makes a very significant contribution to their long-term well-being.